Hello, and welcome to this Tech Talk on Economics of Digital Technologies. Our speaker today is Darren Price from Price Rural Management, where he's the Director and Lead Consultant. Darren provides agribusiness, rural advisory and consultancy services to clients and the wider agricultural industry. Darren's expert knowledge and leadership in precision agriculture assists in the delivery of producer awareness and adoption and also the demonstrable impact of precision livestock management. Recently, his broad range of experience has proven invaluable in providing input to future strategic direction and program evaluation for companies such as MLA. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Jody, and thanks very much to Persa for allowing me to speak today. Welcome everyone to the webinar. Uh, as Jody said, my name's Darren Price. I'm the director of Price Rural Management Proprietary Limited, uh, and I am based in New South Wales. Today, I just wanted to work through a PowerPoint presentation that'll speak to the economics of digital technologies uh, and review a, uh, a project that I was involved with, with MLA and um, Carwilla Pastoral Company that I managed as a general manager. So uh, my role with Carwilla Pastoral Company for 22 years was as their general manager. Um, I'll talk to you about what Carwilla Pastoral looked like, but in 2018, MLA approached Carwilla Pastoral Company through me to uh, help host a digital technology upscale property and or business. Uh, and the theme was hype or happening in the red meat industry. Uh, the media have been saying for many, many years that there's plenty of digital technology out there. We wanted through, through uh, conjunction with MLA's project to actually find out if it was real, ready to implement into the livestock se the sector. So uh, we agreed to participate in, in the Red Meat Digital Forum and host and evaluate various digital technology within a commercial operation. Uh, agreed to provide the site for industry to view installations and speak to end users and allow installation of new, and, of new and emerging technology into the future. And through that, establish what works and what does not work and provide some insight into return on investment and business change opportunity, which we'll speak of a little bit down, down the track. Uh, MLA then went out to various technical uh, or digital tech providers with an open call to see what was out there. Um, come along, bring what you've got and we'll try it out. We'll pit it against uh, you know, people in the, in the same space as you uh, and we will see what washes out of all that. So Kowala Pastoral Company uh, at the moment is, is four properties based around Canberra and Yass in uh, Southern New South Wales, um, typically running eight, uh, 900 Angus, herd, uh, Angus breeders in their herd. Uh, supplying feeder trade and restocker markets. First, first cross ewe flock of up to 10,000 ewes, 4,000 lambs generally going to domestic trade or as store lambs. It grows winter fodder crops, it has centre pivot irrigation. A small time, a small full time staff of only four, so utilisation of contract labour for specific tasks. Topography ranges from river flats to steep hills, uh, elevation of 720 metres to 200, 1250. 700 millimetre rainfall with a frost free period of around four and a half months per annum, obviously through the summer period. What was uh, installed throughout the project was ended up being about 400 individual devices. To put some clarity around that, it did include some smart tags, about 120 smart tags on, on livestock. But this little schematic here provided by MLA and Kawula Pastoral uh, gives you a bit of an idea of all of the, the various areas that we were looking to, to gather data across. It, it was quite, uh, a, quite a broad based range of, of devices and widgets that were installed. So there were about 150 
companies approached by MLA to come along. In the end, there were around 20 odd that came. Um, some viewed in, in the first instance, viewed what we were trying to do and decided they couldn't, couldn't achieve what the aim of the, of the project was. But those who did came to site and we end up installing solutions as listed there on the screen. So water monitors for troughs, tanks and dams, weather station and rain gauges, diesel tank monitors, soil moisture probes, sheep and cattle tags, gate door and cattle ramp monitors, satellite digital satellite mapping, uh, electronic fence monitors, smoke alarms and shed environmental monitors, vehicle asset uh, tracking devices, farm management software. We even tried some apiary condition monitors. We did some cattle heat and calving detection, silo level monitors, animal handling systems, uh, satellite pasture imagery and a variety of connectivity options. Uh, LoRaWAN's uh, satellite Sigfox 3 and 4G. And we discovered that, um, you know, you just can't install a $200, center, $200 sensor and get what you, you need. Um, and there's quite a process going through to decide what you should install, what do you need to know. And realistically, there's a minimum investment required for most providers um, that are, are used across the space. It's not just the sensor, it's also a communications tower. There's monthly and annual device fees, there's ongoing maintenance. Uh, so it, it's not as simple as just picking it up off the shelf and plug and play sometimes. Many different approaches were, were applied by suppliers. A lot of these things were, were put in on the run, um, you know, Every water trough can be different. Every gateway can be different. Uh, topography ranged, as I said, in, in one of the first slides. So there's a few pictures there of communication towers on the left. Uh, and again, across the top, weather stations, some were concreted, some weren't, some were on steel posts. Um, you know, things deployed inside a dam had a bit of a challenge. Um, but overall, the suppliers worked really hard and, and really, really quite innovatively to find the correct way to put something in and position it so that it would work within the business. And providers uh, were asked to work together and, and we felt sharing a data was a bit of a must have. Um, everybody came along with their uh, type of dashboard or widget uh, display. Um, interestingly, I, I had begun the process hoping to have a universal platform that would provide me with all of the data from all of the providers into one platform rather than having 20 apps or 20 separate dashboards. Um, my view has changed over the, the last two years around all that. In fact, it changed uh, far earlier than two years ago, uh, in the last two years at least. Probably six months in, I decided that yes, every provider having their own dashboard was a worthwhile thing so that I could do some really deep dive analytics if I want, but also having a universal platform that provided me with the major data sets in a basic way was a valuable thing too. So I think it's a, it's a bit of a, you know, a double, double whammy there. You need both if you can get them. So what's the digital value proposition? And so I've worked uh, through, uh, you know, the use of these, these widgets and, and platforms and um, have come up with some use cases that we found within Carwilla Pastoral Company at the time I was there, um, were providing some return on investment potential and uh, business practice change. And the ones I'll talk about briefly this morning are water solutions, cattle handling, handling equipment in, incorporating scales, RFID and, and auto drafter, smart tags, weather, soil probes and irrigation scheduling, satellite pasture measurement, some drone technology, and a really interesting uh, down or over the horizon potential with augmented reality reporting. So let's get into those now. Uh, with water solutions, uh, there's currently 40 sensors installed monitoring dams, troughs and tanks. There's also uh, 
uh, six kilometres of a, of a river that tends to flood uh, in high rainfall events uh, running through the main property at Kalwoola. So we've got lit river level detection uh, there for, for floods. Uh, we installate, installed uh, LoRaWAN 3G and Sigfox connectivity to test all of those. And we found all were equally working well and great accuracy and consistency across all of these, uh, these types of connectivity modes. So if we just have a look at this, uh, this screen now, um, this is a, a, a reporting screen by a company called Waterwatch, uh, Tussock out of New Zealand. And I've just started a screenshot for you. So um, what I'm doing here on the screen is working around the various water points and devices that I um, would check on a normal water run. And you can do all of this on your screen from your computer in, uh, in your home or on your mobile phone. Now, typically um, a water run at Kawula would be five tanks, nine troughs and six dams. So say 20 water points. To do that coverage would be 14 kilometers and take about an hour per check. And in the summer we're doing that seven days a week. So annually approximately 180 days of, of water checking. Um, the average cost I worked out was around $110 per water check, so nearly $20,000 per annum. Uh, we reduced the number of physical checks by 70%, so back uh, that pulled it back two runs a week. Um, so you can see that there was quite a saving in the cost of water, water checking in the business. It's a much better, it gives you the ability to utilize your labor units in a, in a different, perhaps more productive way. Uh, it gave us peace of mind when we were monitoring the river levels that, you know, we got an early warning on water rising so we could move stock off and protect those from the flood. This doesn't mean in, with any of these devices that you can sit back and not uh, ever go out in the paddock. There's always the need to go and, and physically check these things. Um, however, it, it is a great device to be able to give you a view of what's going on um, from, from a remote situation, whether it be in your home or like I did, I, man, I had a, a wonderful opportunity to go to Canada um, last year and whilst I was away, I was able to view all of this stuff from the other side of, effectively of the world and if I sensed there was an issue, uh, I was able to contact staff and and um, and get onto it, but they were also able to access this while I was away too, and um, it gave me a great deal of peace of mind to be able to be off the place, and um, but still have that element of oversight. The next one is um, is some cattle handling equipment. Now, um, being a feeder cattle operation, um, we generally um, weigh our cattle every four to six weeks. Um, mob sizes are between 100 and 160 head. A manual way and draft takes three staff for processing and we're probably doing about 60 to 80 head per hour. We used to have a um, manual RFID scanning via a wand to, to track weight gain. And the manual, manual operation of a draft forward of the scales at a normal crush requires a lot of walking or an extra staff member there to uh, to operate a gate. Um, so, you know, it's it's kind of, it, it represents a cost and it's a little clunky. So MLA uh, engaged Tapari from New Zealand and installed uh, a three-way drafting crush. Um, it uh, has an auto RFID uh, weigh, uh, weighing system, uh, weight gain inf info is collected automatically. Um, this, this was an, an amazing uh, piece of equipment. Um, as you can see, there's no one standing there at the, at the head bale or at the crush. Um, I'm operating this crush um, from about 10 metres away with a, a key fob type um, device. Um, and the animals basically stand on 
walk onto the uh, the way platform and the air operated gates and draft automatically send them to the correct position um, based on their weight. And all of that is automatically sent back to the scale head and collected and collated. We had a huge increase in productivity from the old system of 60 to 80 per hour. Um, it allowed us to draft up to 200 head per hour. Um, and there was very little, as I said, very little interaction up, up at the head bail. You'll see me move forward in a minute and prompt the beast to go forward, but um, very little need for me to be up there all the time. And um, so it reduced our labor uh, requirement by 30% um, to, to do a particular draft. They were obviously allocated. So one, one person was allocated to other tasks. The cattle walk through calmly uh, and for the most part, you know, did that all themselves. It was highly accurate and consistent weighing. And um, I, I can't speak highly enough of, of how good it, it worked. It was um, a very, very efficient system to employ. Of course, you know, this, this, is a, this is a system that would cost, you know, 30 odd thousand dollars to install. So you need to have that return on investment. Um, but it was would be forthcoming over a period of time. Um, smart animal tags. Um, Carwilla Pastoral has a breeding herd of a thousand cows. So monitoring uh, animal health aspects is, is always desirable. Um, it, it, we found that we felt there was a, a use case in tracking cattle movement from a, a grazing perspective. Um, Tracking bulls during joining um, could lead to the significant productivity increases. Um, and I, I felt that was probably where our greatest potential return on investment and practice change would come from. So again, here we have a screenshot of what we are seeing uh, on our PCs in relation to individual tags on, on cows and bulls. Um, so as you can see, each cow has a, or animal has a, a, a tag uh, that's a, an RFID connected tag with a GPS tracking inside it, has a solar panel on the, on the rear of it to, to keep the, the tag charged. Uh, and it is able to tell us distance cover of, of an animal over a period of time. It's able to show us the tracks of all those animals as has just come up. It even shows you the movement of those, those animals at a period in time. It tracks the temperature of the animal as well. So it gives us some idea of potential animal health issues. Um, it was a really, really useful bit of gear. It showed us where the, the animals were focusing on their grazing and where they weren't. So we could make some uh, animal restriction uh, uh, thinking out of that. But in terms of tracking bulls, we found it in, in the end to be probably the, the greatest return for us at this stage. And of course, these all these things, are, all these devices are still under development ongoing with all of these companies. But um, if I'm able to, and I was able to track, track bull activity during a during, joining period, um, and if I could increase the carving or the at least the conception rates by 5%, um, five wieners at, you know, even $700 a head uh, uh, is, is another $3,500 to the bottom line per, per annum. Uh, that has significant return over a thousand cows. Um, you know, we were able to see bulls that had moved, you know, five kilometers and some bulls were moving 23 kilometers, for example. In a, in a daily period, it was a, ch a chance to go and find the bulls and you would be able to exactly pinpoint where they were based on their GPS coordinates of the tag on your screen and do a proper health check on that beast and make sure that he was able to join or if there was an issue. Um, you know, in the past, we would drive around the, and, and view a, a, a bull, for example, and he would be fine. He wouldn't um, show any signs of a, a subclinical issue, um, 
but we know from experience, all of us, that bulls do have these problems underlying, might serve two cows and then say, oh, my back's sore, I'm going to sit under a tree. Being able to identify those bulls with those issues um, would be a, a huge, huge help. The soil probes and irrigation scheduling. Um, Carwilla has two 23 hectare uh, centre pivot irrigators. Um, we needed to understand, uh, you know, the weather and soil and how it interacts together. Um, we wanted to match this information to the paddock and the crop requirements at the time and give us greater accuracy in scheduling irrigation events, not only when, but how much, um, and refine our water applications and maximise water use efficiency. So Goanna Ag was the company that um, uh, installed the, the irrigation soil probes. Uh, I should backtrack quickly and give uh, credit to IDS, uh, was the company that supplied the cattle tags. Um, Goanna Ag did, did these, uh, these soil probes and we were able to track the soil moisture movement looking for the refill point of a crop uh, and we can see the rise and fall in the moisture uh, and you'll see this again on this screenshot. Um, uh, it really helped us to start looking at, at our irrigation scheduling. The red dotted line there is the refill point. So every time the water moves down, we would then be able to track, okay, now's the time to start watering before we hit the refill point. Um, the relationship of weather and rainfall also had a big impact and, and changed the, the, the water tracking. And there's a bit of a schedule of, of, of where the, the rainfall was happening. Um, we're just using this information constantly in the end of my stay at Carwoola um, to, to schedule irrigation events, being proactive and not reactive. And we'd started to see a lot less stress in the plants in the paddock um, um, as a result of this. And so potentially reduced our production losses. It's worked really, really well. The next step with this would be to uh, link it to some auto uh, start stop mechanisms or, or telemetry um, so that we could be more efficient with the way that we operate our pivots remotely. However, this was a massive leap forward in the way that we were doing our small scale irrigation. Satellite pasture measurement. So as a grazing business, um, we're always looking at our pasture levels and measuring these. Um, and we can make better livestock management decisions when we know what we have in the paddock. Um, it also it helps us to identify wheat feed wedge uh, requirements. And we would spend considerable time each month uh, moving around the properties and doing the, the pasture measurements. We needed to have an, an accurate and objective measurement at low cost. Um, some of our pasture measurement was, was quite subjective when done by eye on the run. Um, we would often do it with a probe. However, um, that was not always, uh, you know, the best use of our time. So, we were looking for a way of, of measuring our pasture uh, more efficiently and, and at a low cost. So this screenshot is a, a, a product provided by Seabay Labs. Uh, so it's a satellite vision of our pastures on the Carwilla property. You can see me, I'm toggling around and bringing up total standing dry matter measurements. And you simply hold the cursor over a particular paddock and click on it. It'll give you your kilograms per hectare, the date that was in uh, inputted, and um, and and you know how much of the paddock. So 93% in that um, case, or 99% in this case, of, of the paddock area that it was picking up the data across. Scrubby paddocks have less of a percentage of valid data. Um, 
but you would relate that to what you would see normally in a visual way. On average, we were sending, spending about six hours per month assessing and measuring pasture. Uh, and the cost estimate for us was about eight and a half thousand dollars per year. Um, most of the time we don't have more time than one, one day per month to spend doing this. Um, the beauty of a product like this is you're able to reassess every week. These are re regularly updated, I think every three or four days. And um, uh, so it gives you the ability to, to look at these very quickly and very often. You've got a variety of screens that you can use as well, depending on what your preferred measurement view is. In the 90 seconds of this screen video, we've assessed six paddocks. Um, so the ability to do this quickly and accurately uh, is making a huge difference to the way that pasture management decisions can be made. Um, it's very, very fast, very, very efficient. So there are a few of the examples of, of the things that I've identified early up as, uh, as providing some return on investment potential and certainly some use case and business change. Uh, and we've, we've, we have done that in business. So I know that these things work. I guess there's always visions for the future. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to, to seeing uh, some of these things I've listed here implemented and assessed in, in, in business situations. And, uh, you know, we're well into that sort of, uh, that realm now. So walkover weighing systems, I, I can see, you know, they're being used regularly in the north of Australia. I can see an application for those, even in the southern, southern grazing zones. Um, new and emerging sheep and, and cattle tags, the really smart ones. Again, there's quite a few being pushed around um, and are developing as we go along, which is fantastic. Virtual fencing systems for both cattle and sheep. I know that they're, and I'm sure the audience has found virtual fencing for cattle options um, being spoken of, not many for sheep. So um, that would be good. Um, further advancement in irrigation solutions um, that could potentially link to uh, nutritional inputs as well. Um, that they're always a, a big bonus to any, any producer in the irrigation space. Autonomous electric vehicles, um, they're starting to turn up and um, have some exciting potential use cases in my view. Augmented reality and drone tech uh, for all areas of the farm. And I've got a couple of short videos here to show you of those in a second on a couple of uh, projects that I've worked with providers uh, within the MLA framework. And then linking it all together with you know, high level interactive reporting and, and analysis platforms so that we can get the absolute most out of these in, in implementations um, without costing us hours and hours in front of a PC. And of course, that helps everybody to, to continue to build the return on investment and business, business change paradigm and evidence. It's, um, it's a pretty exciting space. So a couple of videos now um, as we, we head towards the end of the webinar. Um, and this one is uh, a video from a company called Aerodyne. Um, just have a quick look and then we'll speak.
So, uh, Aerodyne came to Carwilla Pastoral Company in uh, 2019 and uh, actually did some field testing and validation of, of all of the things that you've just seen on that, uh, on that video. Um, some of the results were very impressive um, and they continue to, to roll out uh, the, their project space with a, a aim for commercialization soon. So very, very exciting, plenty of different ways that you can use drones these days and can be quite a cost effective um, uh, solution. Of course, uh, autonomous uh, flight would be uh, the take home uh, development that everyone would, um, would like to be seeing, um, you know, as part of the drone offering regardless of company. So we hope that um, that sort of thing might be coming in the future as well. The final slide I've got for you is a, an augmented reality video. Um, I was approached by one of the companies in this space through the MLA project as a way of displaying data on a device, whether it be a mobile phone or tablet in the paddock or in your car as you're driving around. And I think it's, um, I think it's very exciting and I think it could be something of the a, a way of displaying things in the future. So here's the video for augmented reality. So that was uh, presented by a company called Orged out of Sydney. So I thank them very much for those. Um, so that just about brings me to the end of my um, presentation. Um, thank you everybody for uh, listening in and, and watching this. Everyone will have a very different view of how they will use the technology and what returns and, uh, on investment and use case and business change there might be. but. Uh, it's a great space, it's an emerging area and uh, I would strongly encourage anyone to, who's thinking about this to, to speak to some advisors uh, and build an, uh, a, a project and, and implement it as soon as you can. It's, it's well worth it. Thank you very much. Thanks Darren for sharing your um, insight and expertise in regard to the economics of digital technologies. Um, the Red Meat and Wool Growth Program is an initiative of primary industries in regions South Australia and supported by Meat and Livestock Australia, South Australian Sheep and Cattle Industry Funds and Sheep Connect South Australia.